I've been wanting to make a video for some time now how to demonstrate to remove runs out of clear coat no matter how good of a painter you are or um, you'll still end up with runs from time to time especially if you live in a cold area of the country and that's not always the case I mean you can get runs in 100 degree heat also so I used to cut runs out for 30 years I used a razor blade and um, that works fine it takes a long time makes your uh, fingers really sore if you got big nasty run like this in, in that you're trying to remove but um, about five years ago I came up with a way to remove runs very quickly very efficiently 100 percent and it takes about uh, less than a tenth of the time that it would take to to do it with a razor blade. I'll demonstrate with the razor blade here first. This is how I would have uh, initially tried to 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 remove a run. You can go like this, and it'll take forever. And that's just a little sag. Now you get to the run part, and you're gonna you're gonna be scraping at this for an awfully long time before you get that thing flat. What I have been doing is taking uh, 320 grit paper, putting it on a bondo spreader, and um, just using your fingertips. Um, just need two fingertips. Just cut right across the top of those runs they come right out very quickly and almost effortlessly now you don't want to try this if you only have two coats of clear on the car you're probably gonna end up going through we uh, do show quality body and paint so most of the things we have coated are at least four coats and a lot of times the runs don't show up till about the third coat um, because you're given high solids clear and it tends to stay wet and uh, sag and run a lot lot easier the more coats you give it um, but when you do get a run even if you're just two coating something you want to make sure you give it a couple more coats where the run is so you have plenty of material to remove uh, the run without sanding through the clear coat. This is a really big, nasty, uh, run, saggy run type thing that was a perfect to demonstrate how easily and how simply this can be removed. You can see how quickly this is coming out. If you use something stiffer than a Bondo spreader, it's almost more difficult to sand it out, I found out, than if you just use a, a Bondo spreader initially, we'll take it just about all the way out for you. Sometimes I'll just pinpoint the pressure on top of that run and just focus on that little run to get it out. Just notice how I'm just applying pressure to the top of that run, varying my strokes, go at different angles, remove the run totally. Now I'll work to kind of focused on the work, uh, the easiest part of it at first. Now I'm getting to the more complicated. And this one here, I'm just running right up and down on top of that run. Right up and down on top of that run. Then I might vary and go across it. But you don't want to take out too much material beside the run. You want to try to stay on top of it as much as possible. Once again, you need four to five coats of clear um, to do this successfully. Two coats of clear, you're taking a chance, but if it's after the fact, 
it's uh, it's a chance I would still take even with two coats of clear because that run is much thicker than two coats of clear. Notice how I'm just sanding straight down on that run. I turn the Bondo spreader over, get the fresh uh, cutting edge. It's cutting a little quicker now. Notice how that thing is coming out really quick. This run here is like an icicle. I'm gonna actually cut the, the razor blade. I'm gonna remove the very end of that run. Now I'm gonna focus on it with a smaller Bondo spreader. I have a big variety of sizes and and shapes of, of these that you need to just cut to conform to how you, you know, what will work best to remove your run for you. Now this one's gonna take a little bit longer. This run here, you'd almost have no success with the razor blade removing this. It would take an incredibly long amount of time to do this. The other problem with doing it with the razor blade, you end up with cuts in it sometimes. Um, and then, then it's almost impossible to get those cut marks out. One thing I didn't mention is that this run needs to be set up. You can't do this the next day out of the booth unless you take this out into the bright sunlight, get it fully cured. In other words, this run needs to be fully cured out. You can use an infrared lamp, cure it out, take it, the best thing is if you have sun and a warm day, get it out there and it'll get cured out enough in one day to do this. If you're trying to attempt to do this without it fully cured out, you're not going to have the success. And you could even just tear and uh, peel that run, which would not be good. Then you're in a repaint situation. Okay, see how quickly that run is totally removed. I like to do this dry. You can do this wet if you want. But you can't really see where you're at wet. You got to keep uh, drying it off to see where you're actually at. Um, now I've uh, have a acrylic block. Uh, it's probably about three sixteenths of an inch thick. I've got some five hundred P five hundred three M sticky on it, and now I'll go across that run really hard acrylic block. Now you're removing the 320 scratches, getting into 500, or 500 will remain. Once again, I can't say how easy this is compared to a razor blade. My fingers would almost be bleeding. I'd be at this for two hours trying to remove this run. But this one here, I'm sure we've been at it less than five minutes. And this is going to be flat. It needs to be fully cured. If you don't think your paint is fully cured or if you have a question after you cut it out with 320, Get that heat lamp back on it, get it back out in the sun, uh, get it fully cured. Otherwise you have a chance of getting a ghost, ghosting run showing up because it uh, wants to cure later after you sand and polish it. A little bit of a sag right down here. I'm going to get that out with the 320. 
320 cuts them out really good. I've even had some really, really nasty runs that I had to start with 180. But I also knew I had a problem with the run and I coated it about six or seven times with clear and had plenty of clear there to to be able to cut it out with initially 180. Here we are using 500 over top of that 320. I'm also assuming that most people watching this video have had a little bit of um, paint and polish um, or sand and polish, in other words, uh, experience. So I'm not going to take this, follow this all the way through the the refinit or the polishing part of it, but this should get you to where your run is 100% removed, and you can start going with finer paper now. You could probably take. Now I like to transition to wet. Now that that run is 100% removed, um, you can transition with your hard block with some uh, 600 wet or 800 wet, followed by about 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, 2,500, and you could even take it up to 3,000, and that should be good to go for polish. I'll show you what my blocks look like that I use. You can use different shapes. Here's um, Bondo spreaders, different widths. Um, I even wrap it around paint sticks. That works really well also. Uh, round blocks, round dowels. So anyway, that should give you a pretty good idea how to take a run out of clear coat uh, very quickly, very easily, very safely. Thanks for watching.